Are you the type of person that just wants to know what you can run with your new lithium Battleborn batteries without all the technical stuff? Yes. I just want to know, can I use the microwave? Can I pop some popcorn up? Can I power down the sofa? Can I charge my stuff? What can I do? I don't want to know about amps, wattage. It blows my mind and my eyes roll over. I don't know what it means. Just tell me the good stuff. Today we are going to cover over 25 common household RV items that we use every single week in our RV while full time living on the road. We are going to start with our smallest items that we use every single day. Common things such as cell phones, hotspots, flashlights, everyday charging stuff. And we will work our way up into the larger, more powerful items like the air conditioner and the microwave. We're going to let you know if you can run it and how long you can. Full disclosures. Number one, we are proud brand partners with Battleborn Batteries. Number two, they partially sponsored our electrical system, which I'll go over the full specs shortly. Number three, our lives have completely changed since going lithium and there is no going back. Okay, Chris doesn't want to hear about volts, watts, or amps, but that's kind of too bad because that's what all this stuff is about. Today, we're going to take an easy route and we're going to use our Victron Bluetooth shunt-based uh, battery monitor, and that's going to give us a quick and easy readout. And if you don't have uh, this type of battery monitor, that's okay, because I'm also going to tell you a quick and easy way to test any appliance once you know some simple numbers. All right, those specs. At the heart of our system, we have four 100 amp hour Battleborn lithium batteries. The brains of it, we have a Victron MultiPlus 3000 VA inverter and charger. Monitoring our batteries, we already talked about the BMV 712, which is by Victron. And then charging that, we have 300 watts of Renergy solar panels on top with a Victron Smart Solar Charge Controller, 30 amp. Also, it can charge by our van's alternator, which is done by a lithium battery isolator, LIBIM225. All right, are you ready? Oh, ready. This is gonna be a lot of fun. This is exciting stuff, Chris loves it. But first, I wanna say that just right off the bat, when everything is shut off, we shut off our fridge, our lights, every single thing, we are still drawing one and a half amps, which you can see on here, uh, 20 watts. That is just your safety systems <clears throat> and your basic coach or RV. This is, of course, our RV. Yours may be different, but that's something that you need to pay attention to. That's why uh, if you don't completely disconnect your batteries, like in storage or something like that, your battery's gonna eventually die. And for those with AGMs, that's how you murder your batteries. Yes, for example, this says it can run for about 10 days. And we do have solar coming in too, so we have to kind of... Keep in mind all the variables. Actually, I'm gonna shut my solar off for this experiment. Hmm, we are getting serious. So now that we have our baseline of 20 watts or one and a half amps that the coach is running off of, we're gonna be able to plug in these various household appliances and show you exactly how much power they draw. So we'll plug in one thing and we will read the draw that that one individual item has on our system. That's right. So the most common thing that everybody has is a cell phone. Let's start off with that. And we have this into a USB up top. And real quick too, if you can convert everything to 12 volt or USB that's small, instead of your 120 household uh, appliance here, it's gonna save you a lot of power because you don't have to have your inverter on. So we're gonna run these directly off the battery and the inverter is off. Uh, mm. be because we don't need to use that yet. That will change when we get to the bigger stuff, but for right now, we can just run right off of 12 volt. Okay, so go ahead and plug in your cell phone. I got the hard job. And we'll check and see what we go up to. Okay, I am now charging. Okay, you can see the amperage went up by just over one amp and roughly 15 watts. So that is not a whole lot of power. So for that example, if you had a 100 amp hour Battleborn lithium battery, the one we recommend, you would be able to charge that for a hundred hours straight. Just 100 down. hours. Yeah. So that just kind of gives you an idea that charging your cell phone 
off of a 100 amp hour lithium battery. You could sit and, and jaw jap for 100 hours straight and not even sweat it. All right, Chris is going to plug in each one of these devices. I'm going to record it down watching the, the app and we're going to go through and see how much each one of these things take to power up. So first up is a USB flashlight. Okay, it's in and it's charging. Wow, that was like almost nothing. It was like 0.25 amps. So Pretty very good. little. Very little. Great. Next Keep up. Keep these around. Yeah, that's, hey, we recommend those. We do. <laughs> Have some flashlights around. Next up, motion light. Yeah, we use these a lot too. All right, same kind of deal. It's uh, less than half an amp, like 0.4 amps and like six watts or something like that. Nice. Not much at all. So those little devices, those kind of lights and things like that, no big deal to run at all. And that's awesome because we use them daily. Probably charge them once a week or so. Yes. Next up is your battery bank. Battery bank. Yes. This is like a 10,000 milliamp battery bank. I mean, I think almost everybody has these things. We don't use them a whole lot. Chris likes to keep one in her purse. I so. do. Yeah. All right, that takes a little bit more, but really, honestly, not that much. So it's like 0.75. It's not even an amp for those. those that's very little, too. Hmm. 0.75 and uh, roughly 12 watts. Next. Camera batteries. Um, that's off my Sony a6400. Just You can go ahead and plug that in. I think they'll all be the same. We have a GoPro battery, too. We'll hey, it's good to know. Yep. That's, of course, charging two batteries. Okay, we are charging about the same thing as the battery bank it looks like 0.75 watts or excuse me amps and about 11 watts so all of these devices so far are less than a cell phone ipad we need a special old connector for that about half an amp not much at all okay yep little bluetooth speaker something you need to have there always to be jamming yeah not much at all about 0.25 amps and just a couple three four watts the lifeblood of our <laughs> internet system in the van hotspot verizon hotspot that's a jetpack 8800 and we are rocking now this next one is a typical hair razor shaver type of deal and um, there is no USB for this type of device, so this is you're gonna have to, you know, charge up by using your inverter. So let's go ahead and see what that looks like. Okay, so that's our baseline again of four and a half amps because the inverter's taken three, so go ahead and plug that in. It's like literally nothing. Like, like point 0.1? Yeah, like a tenth of an amp, maybe a couple watts. So that takes very, like, practically no power at all. But if you have to turn on, we have a big inverter, 3,000 watts. Most people maybe have a smaller one, but look at how much power you have to waste just to charge that up. So thankfully, these things last like a couple weeks on a charge, so not a big deal. But you can see all of those small items, fairly simple to run off of a lithium battery system. You know, and we have 400 amps of lithium Battleborn batteries and Obviously, we have no worries about that type of small stuff. So let's kick it up a notch and get to some of the bigger items. And these are going to be household, small household appliances with some sort of small draw, not necessarily battery charge, but things that you're going to have to maybe run off a of 110. It is so hot and sweaty right now. We're in southern Texas and the humidity all of a sudden just cranked up. So 100%. Can we get to the air conditioner test yet? We're working our way there. No air until we get through everything in between. Woo. All right, let's do the lights so we can get some, some lights going. We have a bunch of LED recess lights. We're just going to do the 10 on the, the main ceiling. ceiling so you can kind of see what that is. Flip that on and that goes up approximately two amps, a little less than two amps. And that's a constant draw. So lights, that's where you get, that's where you start to get in trouble there if you don't have an appropriate um, battery system. Yeah, if you think about it, two amps, we're talking about, for example, a 100 amp hour lithium battery. So that would be 50 hours draining it all the way down, 50 hours of light usage. What's after the lights? 
Oh, the fantastic fan. That will feel good right now. So that's right above us. So this is a fantastic fan that uh, is like the 10 speed. So this is all the way up top. Full blast. Takes again about two amps, just over two amps. And that's not that much power for a fan on high because you don't normally run it on high. We probably run it. I usually put it on 50% so we're not yelling over the fan. Half an amp, less than half an amp. So you can have your fan running quite a bit. That does not take that much power. That's why these are much more efficient than, than the AC. some other types of heating or cooling. All right, got to shut it off now. Party's over. Next up is the radio. This is another thing we used to always have to power down right away. So just powering it up, uh, it went up th three quarters of an amp. Okay. 0.75-ish. I feel like I'm learning like basic information today. Like this is stuff that I should just know. Like does your GPS pull extra? No. <laughs> no, it doesn't. I can say for a fact. Yeah. It's good to know what these little things do so you can, you know, know if you can run them all at the same time and make it through the night. Yeah. The refrigerator. Oh, so important. Now this is 12 volt uh, and also 120, but we can run it on obviously 12 volt when we're not plugged in. Those topos are screaming at me in here. Yeah, I'm getting thirsty. Okay, that is a 3.8 <laughs> cubic foot refrigerator that we have. And it is a variable motor, of course, but let me tell you when it's hot out, your fridge runs all the time. So it really only shuts off overnight once it's completely closed. So. Stop opening that seal. Yeah, so our fridge, um, we went from one and a half up to five and a half. So four amps, 60 watts, and it's still rising. So that's considerable. Yeah, the fridge takes some power. The fridge is a power sucker, whether you are using it or not. That's one of those constants that we talk about for sure. So if you have a super a big one, super large residential fridge, like those beautiful things that people like to put. <laughs> what are, I don't even know what those are anymore. Yeah, we haven't seen one of those for a while. Those take a lot more power. So five amps for this. Wow. Those things might take like, I don't even know, I, maybe 10 times. I'm not sure, 40 amps, 30 amps. So on our battery system, if we were just running the fridge, how long would our bank last? So on an example of a 100 amp hour battery, you could run a fridge like this for about 20 hours straight. And we have four, so less than four days. If you don't have anything if you recharging got, your batteries. Yes. If you don't have solar or an alternator or a generator, that's not long. No, it's not long at all. That's why it's important to have a good system and also some way to recharge it. They are certainly good. Okay, next up is our laptop. And this is a 12 volt laptop charger. And if you don't have one of these, highly recommend it. So instead of turning on your inverter, like we talked about before, you can run your laptop right off your batteries without wasting any extra power. And laptops come in a lot of different sizes. Mine's a bigger one, as a Dell XPS 15. Chris has a Dell XPS 13 and um, mine takes a lot of power. This is where we really ran into not being able to have enough power for our fridge and working all day, editing videos, working on laptops. It just, it was not enough power with our initial system on this van. It was a major source of anxiety. It really was. So that's something to consider uh, if you're gonna be working full time from the road. Okay, that went from an amp and a half up to almost nine and a half amps. Whoa, Yes. with that, the 12 volt. Seriously, yeah, imagine adding more on there. So wow. uh, about eight amps on a laptop like this. And what was the fridge, five? Uh, about five amps when it's running. Holy moly. Yeah, so it's quite a bit. It really does take a lot of power. So you, this would drain out your battery, just the laptop plugged in would drain your batteries in two days, roughly. Yeah, I mean, let's just say you had a big 10 hour 
day and you had to have this thing plugged in all day long and it was using power. I yeah. Mean, I mean, you've done that before. Yeah. I, yeah, I, I basically have it in all the time. <laughs> basically, smoke is coming from this thing all day long. It is. I'm surprised it hasn't melted yet. Uh, so that's that. I think that's a big, big point that that you got to take into consideration. This is a laptop too. Some people have monitors and desktops and things like that. So that's a lot, a mm -hmm. lot extra. Next up, we are going to run through some common small household appliances that are your standard 120 volt, and you do need your inverter on to operate them. Here we have a Cuisinart. This is a stick that you can do an immersion blender or a whisk. You can change it out. Next, a curling iron a hair straightener, this Dash Mini uh, Waffle Iron, and our dehumidifier slash air purifier slash fan. Multifunctional. Okay, there are only two more items on our small household appliance list. One is a TV, which we don't have, and two is the actual forced air propane furnace. Uh, ours is a 16,000 BTU, I think. Uh, very common RV type of furnace. Um, and those take, I think, more power than people really estimate. We cannot forget the e-bikes though. This is something that we get asked all the time. Can you charge your e-bikes off-grid while boondocking on lithium? Uh, so the answer is yes. Let's go ahead and plug it in and see what we get. 4.2 almost 10 amps so these bike batteries do take quite a little bit of power especially since we have two batteries and they can take up to seven hours to charge so 10 amps times seven hours 70 amp hours times two is 140 so for that you could easily overdo a single 100 amp hour lithium battery Okay, we've made it. We've graduated to the big boys. We're actually gonna see how much power it's gonna take to run these larger household appliances. And an easy way to think about this is anything that heats or cools is a big household appliance. Um, it applies to almost anything. So when you're talking about microwaves, air conditioners, heaters, um, water kettles, water heaters, all that type of stuff. If it heats or cools, it's gonna take a decent amount of power. So let's go through uh, some of these items that we have. Let's start with the induction oven. We're gonna max sear this, the highest setting. And it's rising. 90? 90? 90 amps that thing takes. Holy so Hannah's. One lithium Battleborn battery is going to last you one hour of boiling water. Oh my gosh. What if we change it to medium? You can definitely turn it down. Next, we're going to go to our water kettle, which we use every single day. Crank this on our usual setting which is 172 degrees 83 amps so 79 amps for that Jeez. thankfully you can boil water in about five minutes so that's not a big deal you're not going to cook on that thing for an hour right you're going to make coffee and it's going to be five minutes so and next up we have the hair dryer this is a big one That peaked at 150 amps. At this point, we need to talk about, you can't just have one battery. Here, you're gonna need to have two batteries and an inverter that's big enough to handle this. This is 1,875 watts, so you would need at least a 2,000 watt inverter and two lithium batteries so that you could run this. Now, Battleborns are strong enough to continuously uh, each battery can do 100 amps continuously, or it surges, I think, for 30 seconds for 200 amps per battery. So two 100 amp hour batteries will give you 200 amps of power continuously until they go down and the BMS shuts them off. 
when you live in a class B, you use the microwave for more than just microwaving. Big old bread basket. Okay, so I'm just going to throw some food in there so it's not nuking on empty, and we'll get a reading. Ready? Yep. That thing is peaking at almost a 145 amps it just hit. Oh, so it's the same as the hairdryer. Well, minus the four, you're a little bit lower. So it's uh, like 141 amps. Oh, wow. Okay. And that is your standard high microwave setting. Yeah. So again, if you wanted to be able to just cook something in your microwave, this is a practical application. You know, you would need two lithium batteries, a 2000 watt inverter. I think our um, microwave is, is under 2000 watts. And as long as it's hooked up properly and you have the proper size wiring, you would be able to use your microwave for quick meals on two lithium batteries. Hmm. Good to know. And now our Vornado heater. Uh, let's make it more hot in here. Hmm. Set at 87. Okay, now I feel some heat. All right, there it kicks up to about 60 amps. So 60 amps on low, and if we kick it on to high, oh, that's blowing right at me, that's hot. <laughs> okay, shut her down. 135 amps it kicked up to, which would be 131 roughly. Oof. So that's a great example of you just not really practically being able to run a space heater like that off of batteries. We only run that when we're plugged in at a park. Yes. So same kind of thing. If you had two lithium batteries, you'd be able to run that thing. Uh, but on low for, you know, maybe three hours and then on high for just over an hour. Hmm. Not really practical uh, use with a, with a space heater like that. Okay, really quick. Uh, speaking of heaters, the water heater, most people have water heaters. They're about 1500 watts. Ours is a, is a small one. Um, it's only 400 watts. Hmm. But an average water heater is about 1500 watts. So it's going to be just like that space heater we just did there. Same type of thing. Not practical enough to run long term. You could get a little bit of use out of it, but then your batteries would be drained. So this is where you want to know where is it ideal for you to run your electric versus your propane. Exactly. That's why people use propane off grid because it just is way more energy efficient than electricity off grid. Unless you have a really good setup, uh, big lithium, big solar, you can do it. And finally, what we've all been waiting for is the air conditioner. It's hot as hell in here. <laughs> and I've been waiting for it. So let's kick on that AC and uh, see how long we can run the AC off grid. So the air conditioner, uh, we do have a soft start and that is the fan that just kicked on. So the fan was about 25 amps. There's the AC right there. Now off of experience, I know that the amps continues to, to rise more than this 130. It's like a very kind of slow type of ramp up. So we're gonna let this go for just a minute and enjoy the AC. Okay, so you can see that the air conditioner raised up to about 150 amps. Yeah. That is a lot of power. So there's those handful of couple appliances, the air conditioner, the hair dryer, the microwave. Induction. Uh, the induction, the- Tea the, kettle. The tea kettle is a little less because it's a, a thousand watts instead of uh, 1800. Um, and then our Vornado space heater, which is uh, a big one too. But those appliances, you might be like, it's not even worth it. But I will say, being able to run the air conditioner for us, so we have four 100 amp hour batteries, like I said. Um, so 150 amps, 
if we ran that for two hours, we'd be down to 100 amp hours, maybe two and a half hours. It doesn't sound like a whole lot. And if you're sitting in the middle of nowhere with the heat sweltering down and you want to run your AC all day, no, it, it does not work like that. <laughs> but we use it all the time in parking lots, uh, quick stops. Like let's just say we're at a Cracker Barrel and it's you know pretty hot at night and we just want to run it for a half an hour just to cool everything down. We run our AC all the time. Yeah. And another big time we use it is like when we're on uh, travel days and we stop in the grocery store, you know, I'll go into Costco for like an hour. Yes. And Aaron sits out here. Uh, we joke and I, and say that we leave our dog in the car while I shop with windows <laughs> open and, you it's know. It's so but, hot. This is a metal van with glass windows all the way around it. RV insulation is just not that good. So it's really great. We absolutely love it. Yeah. So like I said, if you had two 100 amp hour batteries and a 2000 watt inverter, you could technically run everything we showed today for not very long. We have 400 uh, which allows us to, to, for us, we're able to be off grid for about 10 days. Now we have a backup generator. So if we wanted to run the AC for six, seven, eight hours, cause it was going to hit a hundred that day or something, that's what we have the generator for. Um, so it does make sense to, to have that sometimes. Yeah. It's good to have the multiple options on how to recharge, how to maintain and really in order for this to uh, apply to you, you have to get a handle on what your power system is and what your individual components are that you use, like what your work day is like, what your living is like, because everybody's different. One person to two people makes a big difference and yes. how you spend your time every day makes a big difference. Lots of different needs out there. So we have been using these for uh, just over a year now. We absolutely love them. We weren't joking. This did change this our did life. This did change our lives. Completely. And we're never going to be able to RV without lithium anymore. It's Ever. Just, it's just not going to work out for us, unfortunately. <laughs> we're stuck with it for life. Yeah. Um, so if you want to learn more about these Battleborn lithium batteries, we do have an affiliate link down below. We do thank you for checking that out. Um, if you have any questions that you want to randomly ask, definitely feel free to do that. Also a quick note, I have two videos on the complete install of what I did here. They're very long and very technical and they're not like leisure type watching videos. But if you want to know more about how the system works and how I actually put it in, I'm not a professional at all by any means, but it gives you a good idea to kind of check it out and see how somebody else did it. Um, definitely check out those two videos if you're interested. And it gives you an idea on how to do it while still living in the van. Cause you not only did it and learned it, but we were living in it at the time. So we did not have a garage space. We did not have any living space as temporary. That makes a big difference, but it can be done. Yeah, it was horrible, but <laughs> we did it. I also said I was gonna give you guys that little trick on how you can calculate this stuff out yourself. It's extremely simple. You only need two numbers. One is your watts. Watts are universally rated on almost all devices. It's written on all types of things. So once you find out, let's just say, for example, 1000 watts our tea kettle is, then you need the volts. Are you using 120 volt or are you using 12 volt? We're talking about batteries here today, so you're using 12 volt. So 1000 watts divided by 12 volts will give you that roughly 80 amps. It's like 83 amps per hour that we were talking about. And you can do that. This is where your eyes gloss this over. This is where I'm already getting lost here. You can do that with any item. So if you just want to know how long I could run this device, and that's how we know like the air conditioner or the blow dryer, it's 1800 watts. That's a lot of watts. 200 watts, that's not a lot of watts. Five watts, like you can just tell uh, by that simple calculation how long something will run. <laughs> For example, our coach came with a 1000 watt inverter. So when we were buying all of our appliances, we made sure we were under that thousand watts so that oh. we were able to use them. Uh, so we knew right off the bat, we could not run our microwave or our air conditioner because they were over that thousand watts of our inverter. That's why we upgraded to the big dog inverter. And I put all the outlets and all the systems on that so that we can run everything once the inverter is powered, just like a house. And that's where I got happy because I could just plug it in and I didn't have to ask, can I plug this into that outlet? Otherwise, I think that's going to do it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. 
Catch us on the next video and we appreciate your support. Bye. Don't remember when